Welcome to the Akatank Unitarian Universalist Church live stream worship service. I'm Reverend Alexa and my pronouns are she and her. I'm the part-time pastoral care minister here and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to also lead worship once per month. Akatank UU Church is a welcoming and inclusive community that seeks to create a more just and compassionate world through our actions to bring about justice and by honoring the web of nature of which we are all a part. All are welcome here. No matter whom you love, no matter your identity or heritage, no matter your beliefs or background, no matter your means or abilities, you are welcome here in this religious community. All are also welcome to share in a time for conversation and connection after worship Simply stay in the Zoom meeting after worship to join in. We've got a great conversation coming. Join us today, but first let me chime this chime to herald our service together. Joining us today as worship associate, we have Brenna Clanton. Good morning. I'm your worship associate today. My name is Brenna Clanton and my pronouns are she and her. If you are new to Akatink and would like to talk more about this church, please be sure to reach out to me, our minister, Reverend Pippin or Reverend Alexa or a member of the board. Contact information is posted on our website at www.akatink.com uu.org. On our website, you can check the online order of service on the worship section of our webpage. You are on the website. Be sure while you are on the website, be sure to check our events page for upcoming virtual gatherings and other news. I now invite you to close your other windows or apps and devices. Take a deep breath and center yourself for worship. It is our tradition as Unitarian Universalists to light a chalice to gather us together. And so now Brenna and I will do that. To be alive is to be hurt, and we are all in need of healing. Healing another means helping them towards wholeness. It means easing their pain, daring to touch their wounds with tender hands and open hearts. Asking for healing means allowing our own tender places to be touched, our own pain eased. We light this chalice for healing, the gentle giving and receiving that helps us become whole. I call to worship the joyful, the brokenhearted, the fearful, and the exhausted. For whatever you are feeling right now, may this be a place for you to find what you need. You are welcome here in this gathering where we come to feed our souls, heal our hurts, and just to be together. For too long now, we have experienced the things that divide us, poverty and oppression, unjust laws and policies, violence and imprisonment. We cannot fix these in a day or even a year but we can fix them and we must because we know that despite divisions, despite the triumphs or defeats of candidates and parties, our destinies, all of them remain deeply intertwined. Liberation must be for all people if it is truly liberation. As long as one soul suffers needlessly, we cannot rest. As long as our planet screams out in pain, so will all who live on her. For all of the feelings, the emotions, the pains, the hurts, the joy and celebration you have in your hearts and body and mind today, you are welcome here. Here may you find rest and renewal, partners for the journey, time to contemplate and energy for action. Let us worship together. My prayer today is in many ways a prayer of hope, but also a prayer of sadness. Divine one of light, your blessings are many, and yet this is a time of horror and loss. Too many have been injured or killed for the expression of their beautiful identities. 
too many have been forced to suffer as they rightfully explore their identities and expression. So much loss, so much death and pain. And we mourn the expansion, the exponential expansion of the pandemic. Our hospitals are filling, our medical staff are exhausted and the only way forward is to move with love. We can move with love and protect others by staying at home, staying distant from loved ones, physically in, in their presence, staying safe so that all may gather next year around our tables and feasts. Even on the sacred day of Thanksgiving, let us put the love we feel into practice by staying in our small bubbles or pods rather than risking those we love by coming together indoors. Spirit, we pray to you for a world that brings out the best in all of us, challenging as that always is, particularly in this moment of loss, grief, and sorrow. As the days shorten and the weather chills, as we want so much to be indoors together, remind us that this is a time for strength, strength to do what we know is right. Please, Spirit, help with the strength. Amen. So our reading today is a bit of a collaboration. Unitarian Universalist minister Kendall Gibbons wrote an inspiring meditation, which serves as a springboard for this reading by Reverend Karen Johnston, entitled Reverence That Is Real For You. Lump in throat in the midst of nature's breathtaking beauty, involuntary gasp under the umbrella of vast cosmos, touching the earth made of mycelium underfoot, Vibration of humility as we observe great mystery. Reverence that is real for you. Let go of that picture. Old bearded man sitting on a cloud, keeping score. Even if you believe in God, that portrait does your belief no justice. Set aside that image, start over. Let emerge a reverence that is real for you. Perhaps you will live T.S. Eliot's wisdom, ending up back where you started, knowing it as if for the first time. Perhaps you will never return to that home again, but find yourself in a new one, a larger, longer, more pathless journey that we Unitarian Universalists, we humanists, we li religious liberals share. You shall not be alone. We shall not be alone. It is good we gather. Charland Sledge and others, mostly from the Celtic tradition, write of spiritual, of thin places as a spiritual solace. They write, Thin places, both seen and unseen, where the door between the world and the next is cracked open for a moment, and the light is not all on the other side. When I was young, I attended a Quaker school. From pre-K through 12th, we met once a week for some time of silence. I always loved the stillness and felt its power in my body, in my heart, in my slowed breathing and deep calm. The best meetings for worship, as Quaker called those odd gatherings of hundreds of kids and a few adults held in some classroom or occasionally in a field out on the bleachers, were in the gym. How, you ask, could the gym be a better meeting place than outdoors? You see, the full school meeting for worship was, for me at least, a whole body experience. The wooden floor was kept pristine for basketball, so it was covered by this weird smelling tarp. Not a bad smell, 
just a smell I've never experienced anywhere else. The light came through the gym windows at a slant and it almost felt like you were underwater. The main athletic lights used for basketball games and such were dimmed. The folding metal chair was cold, till it wasn't, and it held my back at a certain angle. Mostly no one spoke and at all those school meetings, we generally had a few minutes, this isn't so much a Quaker practice, but maybe what you do when you've got hundreds of kids, um, we mostly had a few minutes of violin from a very talented older student while one of the music teachers struggled to keep up on piano. The music was to help us center ourselves. A few minutes listening and then silence. And here is the amazing point of that story. Over 50 years later, I can still put myself in that room. I can still smell that odd tarp smell. I can hear the music and feel the slight rustle of those near me. The chair is cold and the silence is deep. In short, the space created so long ago is still with me. For the gym at that school on that day, for me alone, was what they call in the Celtic tradition a thin place, a place that makes you know heaven and earth are only three feet apart. But in the thin places, that distance is even smaller. A thin place is where the veil that separates heaven and earth is lifted. That's a Celtic saying. So one of the important things about these special places, a thin place from somebody may not be a thin place for anybody else. I've checked back with my old school friends and not a one recalls the experience of all school meeting for worship on Wednesday at two o'clock as holy or thrilling or soothing, not important or even memorable. Not a one recalls the way the air felt in that room, but I do. So maybe you have experienced such a place in your life. Maybe you went to the Grand Canyon and felt time like a person standing next to you. Or maybe you look at a garden as a miracle of nature that is so perfect that somehow you feel closer to everything when you are there. Or fall leaves. Or the big, unimaginably big ocean. Some people have this feeling in a cathedral or the Sydney Opera House, or maybe just seeing a new baby. For some of us, maybe the place you are starting to think of isn't a spot where the divine or heaven shine through, because maybe that isn't language that works for you. But maybe there is a place you recall feeling incredibly safe. Possibly somewhere in your house as a child or an outdoor hideout a place where you knew that no harm would come to you, your tree house or a spot behind some bushes on the school playground. Today, I'll be asking you to consider where you would like to be in order to feel the ground beneath your feet and know that you are a part of the world and your personal battery is being recharged. Where would you like to meditate? Where would you go to feel that the divine is near or simply that nothing bad could happen to you? A safe place. I don't know if thin places have a particular geography, if caverns or mountains or gorges draw some energy or share some force with us. What I know is that these places these experiences can be powerful. And more to the point today, they can be a resource in a stressful or difficult time. The poet Tadig writes, a thin place is an encouragement, a sacred invitation to draw near, to approach barefoot in humility in reverence and awe. It is both seen and unseen, invisible, we see you. So here are a few images, in some cases, courtesy of some of you that resent, represent places 
where I've felt this thin place or home energy. bring this all up now because as I said I find and many of us find that we can return to these special places briefly in our minds. We do this as a means of distancing ourselves for a brief and calming moment for the stress of today. This might be a place where you can hold deep sadness. This might become a refuge or an escape to help you hold what you're experiencing now or in the future. I'm introducing a, here a spiritual practice. Why do I say practice instead of exercise? Because a practice is something that you can do in an ongoing way. An exercise can be one time. Practice is about building a skill. It is about being present in the moment and that is what I'm gonna ask you to do. With rising COVID cases and an unsettled political trajectory, we are in a stressful moment. What can we do if the news continues to be so difficult? I am optimistic about vaccination, political change, but I also believe that my stomach will do more than a few backflips between now and the end of this saga. For these reasons, I wanted to share this spiritual practice with each of you. I hope that all of you can find your own thin place or safe place in your memory and cast your mind there when you need to. Jen will be breaking you up into groups of three. Each of you will have three minutes there, so that's like 10 minutes all told, to reflect on some place you know, even if you only passed through once, even if you only saw a picture, even if you only make it up. Please tell your friends in your small group its name and its characteristics. That name thing is important because that's kind of like a little filing system. So you can say, yeah, Hawaiian Island or something, and that will bring it back to you. So please tell your friends its name and its characteristics. The more specific you can be, the better chance you have to make it a refuge to which you can travel in difficult times. So I'm gonna ask you to think about what does it look like? What is the light like there? What did it feel like? Was there wind or was the air moist or cold or something else? Was there a smell? Moss in the woods, incense in a spiritual place, the smell of a burning oil lamp in some UU space? Were there sounds? What were they? Were they constant or intermittent? Was there silence? Were you alone or with others? Were you there once or often? Was there energy in that place? Could you feel energy or 
just deep stillness. Did you say or do something you, where while you were there that holds you to that spot? You see where I'm going with this. I'm asking you to remember and in some ways recreate the many dimensions of your experience. What hooks can you use to rebuild, to recreate or experience this beloved place again? When we return here, I'm going to ask each of you to sit in silence and I'll ask you these questions again as you attempt to mentally return to that refuge, to build that safe and sacred place in your mind. So we're going to break into groups. Please share as you are willing some experience of a place or safety or spirit that you will build with your community to return to again and again. And you know, Going into chat is can be a, just a little odd. If somehow you find yourself alone in a chat, come back here and Jen's going to have you join in another group. Those are that um, has happened in times. So please, Jen, can you send us into our chat rooms? And now we will sit in silence for a few minutes as I ask you to, re to return to that refuge that you are building in enter it, experience it as both new and comfortably the same. Experience it in a bold way. Slip away, close your eyes, follow your breath to the still place that leads to the invisible path that leads you home, says Mirabai Star in the interior of Castle. So I invite you to please sit comfortably with your eyes closed or with a soft gaze, whatever is comfortable for you. Feet on the ground. And I ask, what does your place look like? What is the light like there? What does it feel like? Is there wind or is the air cold or warm? Is there a smell? Can you smell leaves or dust or something else? Are there sounds? What are they? Are they constant or intermittent? Is there silence? Are you alone or with others? Who is with you? Is this a place you have returned to many times? Or is it only your first or second time there? Is there energy in that place? Slowly, slowly, please return to the here and now. Slowly, slowly, come back to this place and this moment. Come back to today. But know that you can return to that other special place whenever you need to. 
perhaps you will want to make your own slideshow. Come up with an aroma, journal about it, draw or collage about it. Whatever you can do to hold on to serenity and to develop a refuge. Drape an experiential shawl around your shoulders and your spirit. You can build multiple thin places or safe places in your mind, and then you can go back to that place, to that thin or homey place to experience safety and calm all of the love as you need to in the days and weeks ahead. Blessed be. Amen. Yes, Brenna, there you are. Let's extinguish the chalice calling our service to a close. Though we will extinguish our chalice flame, we carry with us what we kindled the light of inspiration, warmth of compassion, the fire of commitment. May we bring these gifts into our lives and share them radiantly out in the world. I invite you to join me now in our community blessing with these words of David Bumba. This church is dedicated to the proposition that behind all our differences, beneath all our diversity, there is a unity that makes us one and binds us forever together in spite of time, death, and the space between the stars. We pause now in silent witness to that unity. No matter how weak or how frightened we may feel, we each have gifts that can make a difference in the world. In this coming week, may you do at least one thing to support the broken, to welcome the stranger, to celebrate what is worthy, to do the work of justice and love. Be strong, be connected, each day act so you may be a little more whole. And friends, be very sure to take good care of yourselves. Thank you.